It's always been this dream that a lot of us have had, I think. What if every computer could talk to every other computer? What if every computer, irrespective of who made it, which vendor built it, was able to transfer data instantly to any other computer in the world? The internet is a realisation of precisely that vision. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Back in 1969, astronauts gave us this memorable image, a view of Earth from the moon. The world appeared a very small place. In the same year, other steps were being taken, which would eventually make our planet seem even smaller. Funded by the Pentagon, four American universities began experimenting with a way of linking their computers together, using the telephone system. Soon, computers around the globe were hooked up, creating a vast worldwide computer network. The internet was born. This is the headquarters of Australia's most important internet connection with the outside world, the Australian National University Computer Centre in Canberra. There's an impressive bunch of machinery around here. Indeed, it's probably one of the most powerful computer rooms in the country. But surprisingly, none of that grunt's needed to run the internet link, just the relatively small computers in these racks. Jeff Houston is the manager of Arnet, Australia's main link to the internet, and has been largely responsible for the introduction of the internet into Australia. Who owns the internet? Everybody and nobody. It's one of the things about the internet that, realistically, your machine, my machine, and everyone else's machines that are connected to the internet are part owners of what is a common asset. Well, if no one owns it, who pays for it? You and me and everyone else that uses it. There's no such thing as a central service outside of your computer and my computer. The computers that you and I connect to the internet define what the internet is. And what you pay in running your computer and what I pay in running mine effectively pay for what the internet is in terms of its services. In a way, the internet works like the postal system. Messages are sent in electronic packets each with its own address. A packet is posted to the nearest computer in the direction of the address. The process is repeated by every computer that receives the packet, which could be a dozen or more, until it finally ends up at its destination. Now, it might all sound like a lot of work, but remember, it's all being done by computers and the signals travel at the speed of light. Typically, a message could be sent anywhere around the world in just a few seconds even if the route involves going through a whole chain of computers. But for ordinary folk like you and me, one of the most useful things about the internet is electronic mail. It's cheaper than a fax and much faster than a letter. But the real plus is that distance doesn't matter on the internet. It's just as cheap to email someone in Moscow as the house next door. And text-based messages are just the beginning. A new mass media. It's not television. It's not radio, it's not newspapers, but it has elements of every single one of those. And it's a new medium because it's going to be interactive. And they'll be able to deliver sound and pictures into your home, right on your computer screen. And you'll be able to pick sites from elsewhere in the world and download pictures and sounds. So, how do you join up? Well, if you want to connect from home, all you need is a computer, a modem and a phone line. Oh, and it helps to have some extra memory. Another phone line's always good. A healthy bank balance. Lots of time. Help from a friend who's already connected. Mm. Advice from a computer expert to undo the friend's help. Mm. An understanding family. Patience. And after all that, a good stiff drink. Ah, oh, that's why they call it the web. It's full of bugs. Jokes aside, you will need one more thing, a number to call. To get that, you open an account with a service provider. In essence, they're just organisations that have a computer permanently linked to the internet and banks and banks of modems for you to dial into. It's surprising how little there is at the other end of the phone. The computers in this converted household garage are part of a partner, 
a non-profit service provider and therefore one of the cheapest ways onto the net. There are already some 20 to 40 million people who can connect to the internet, and the number's growing rapidly. Indeed, if it stays at the rate it has been, some estimate that there will be a billion people hooked up by the year 2000. A billion people is about a sixth of the world's population, so it's probably wise to be a little bit sceptical. After all, exponential growth doesn't go on forever. But even if the internet enthusiasts are only half right, we could be looking at a revolution whose impact is as great as the introduction of the telephone. It's going to get woven into the daily fabric of our lives. It'll be just like using a telephone. It'll be like using your car on the roads. It'll be like our sewer systems. We take it for granted. It's just, if I want to talk to somebody on the far side of the world, it'll be just as natural as me talking to you now.